So welcome back. Um, in this series, we're talking about oscilloscopes and, you know, helping to understand about oscilloscopes, how they work, what they do. And um, especially for those who are just starting out with learning electricity and different measuring equipment, you know, what does a scope do? How do you access this and how can you take um, advantage of the scope and all the functions it provides? Now, one of the things that scopes allow you to do in general is to access them via your desktop, your laptop. Um, for example, if you have a Windows machine and you want to get the data that the that the scope is seeing um, so that you can manipulate it in whatever software you have on your desktop, um, it's relatively easy to do. And um, the scope I'm going to be talking about today is a Rigol DS. 10054Z, and uh, it's kind of an entry-level scope, but it allows you, surprisingly, to access it via LAN or via USB. So um, we're going to talk about the procedure you need to take to connect from your Windows desktop to your Rigol scope uh, via, I've got mine connected via the network, via a network uh, adapter. So um, that's what we're going to talk about in this video, and um, it should apply in general to other Rigol scopes and probably also to other manufacturers. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the Rigol website, and I've got it here, and you can see it is R-I-G-O-L-N-A dot com, and you go to the downloads, slash download section, okay? And you will get a list of all the software that you can download for all of their equipment. All right. Now, we don't want all that. We just want to filter by the, the device we have. So I'm going to select a series to filter by and go down to the digital oscilloscopes. I've got a DS1054Z, so I'm going to click on that, hit filter results, and it will give us four different softwares that, are, that apply to that device. Um, the Ultra Station, I don't care about. That's, uh, I believe, you can do some, uh, for some of the other models, you can do some stuff, function generation and editing of, of waveforms. We don't want that. Um, but there, these, these first three I'm going to download. There's the IVI driver, which you may need in some cases, probably not with what we're doing here, but just to have it can't hurt to download. And then the UltraScope remote interfacing control software and also the Ultra Sigma instrument connectivity driver, all right? The, the most important one is this Ultra Sigma driver. Uh, it is huge, it's 540 megabytes, and it gives you the ability to connect over the network or over USB with your um, oscilloscope. So very important that you download this and install and then if you want to have a window on your Windows machine that shows you a duplicate of the um, oscilloscope uh, display and allows you to communicate with the oscilloscope and to uh, change settings and that kind of thing remotely on your PC, you're going to want that. So download these first three, and it's going to take a while, but when you get them all done, you're going to have... Um, these, you're going to have the RGDS MSI, which is this IVI driver, and then you're going to have Ultra Sigma. You can see it's 534 kbytes, so it's 5, 544,000 kbytes, and then Ultrascope, which is much smaller, and that is the oscilloscope uh, on your, um, your desktop. So download those, and then go into Ultra Sigma, and it's a zip. You double-click on it. And you will get a folder, and inside the folder you get a bunch of stuff, but just double-click on setup.exe and it will set that up for you, all right? And then do the same thing for the uh, UltraScope installer, and there's just a setup.exe. Click on that and install, and you should be good to go. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do is reboot your computer to make sure everything takes, and then... Um, Install once those things are installed, what you're going to get, and if you look over here, I've got two icons, one for the Ultra Sigma drivers software and one for the Ultrascope. All right. So the first thing you want to do 
is you want to double click on Ultra Sigma and start it up. All right, and it's going to take a bit to start up. It's kind of slow. And here is the window you're going to get for your Ultra Sigma. And you can see it's got a list of devices available. There's nothing right now, but you've got a LAN connection, GPIB, USB, RS-232, and so on. But since we're connected via LAN, I'm going to click on LAN, and it's going to give me another window to identify and create this instrument resource. So I go down here to Auto Detect of LAN Instrument, and I'll hit click on Search, and it's going to go out, and there it is. It found my uh, DS1054Z scope. So now I hit OK, and you can see it populates up here on the list a DS1000Z, and the specific device is DS1054Z, and here's the TCP IP address, and it's an instrument. So we're good to go. So Ultra Sigma is working. The next thing you do, and make sure you do it all the way I'm showing you, or else you can get into a mess. Um, right click on this 1054Z, and you can see there's some choices. Um, down at the bottom, you've got what's called a Skippy Panel Control, SCPI, which is a, a method to enter commands to uh, talk to your scope. We're not going to do that now, but you may need that later if you get into some uh, advanced uh, interactions with your scope over the network. And the next thing we have is Ultrascope, and that is the software we downloaded uh, previously to give us a uh, oscilloscope um, to, um, to copy the oscilloscope view into a window on our computer. So I'm going to click on that, and it takes a bit to start up. This software is not the fastest. And um, it's starting up. It's on my other monitor. So I move it over, and here we go. Uh, this shows exactly what I'm showing on my um, oscilloscope. And it's basically a flat line. And you can see um, it's kind of duplicating much of the functionality of your scope, but it's all different. Okay, all the buttons are in different locations, and it's honestly, it's a bit of a mess. You're going to have to relearn um, where to access the scope controls um, to get access to them. But um, for now, you've got the clear auto run single buttons that are up on top of your scope. So basically, you've just accessed your scope and you can control it and view what the scope sees. All right. So now what we're going to do is I have just started up uh, a piece of a free piece of software called Audacity. And Audacity is an audio waveform generation uh, editing software, really incredibly useful. Um, and in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a square wave and send it out. Um, this is on my Windows 10 machine. We're going to generate a square wave, send it out via the sound card to the uh, headphone jack on my lap on my computer, my desktop. And we're going to grab that signal and um, connect the probes on my oscilloscope to monitor that and to show that on the screen. So to do that, I've started up Audacity and I want to go to the tracks, add new mono track. And I've just added a new track and now I want to generate a square wave. So I'm going to go into the generate menu, go down to tone and I've got it defaulting to a square wave with a 100 hertz, 100 cycles per second frequency and amplitude at 1. And it can go between 0 and 1. Um, the duration, I have default to 55 seconds. So it's 0, 0 hours, 0, 0 minutes, and 55 seconds. 55.00 seconds. So you can enter whatever number you want, but you're going to want this thing to stay on for you know a minute or so just so you can you can watch it. So I've got that and I hit OK and it's generating that square wave in here, all this blue. Uh, you can't see it because it's all smushed together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to left click, select a small area, and hit control E and then do that again and control E and that's going to zoom zoom in and you can see here's my square wave it goes to one, minus one and one. Okay? So I've got my square wave ready to generate. I'm going to crank the volume up to maximum so we get a good signal, a couple volts out of the headphone jack. 
and I am going to hit play and see if it shows up on the oscilloscope over the network. So I've got play and I'm going to also hit auto to you know make sure that the settings on the scope will capture this. Okay, so now you can see I've got on my scope, I've got a 250 millivolt plus and minus 250 volt signal. Okay, so now I've got my uh, square wave on the scope and I'm reading it via the LAN connection. And one of the cool things I can do right away is I can right click on this display and I can go to save channel. And what that does is it will save what you see on the screen, all those samples, as points in a CSV file. All right, so I can go save channel and it's got channel one I want to save as a CSV. And if I hit OK, I can specify where to put it and it will save it as a CSV file. And then what I can do is I can reproduce that in Excel or whatever and um, I can see my, um, I can I, I have all that data and I can just uh, manipulate it or, or do whatever I want in Excel or any other uh, software with it. So that's the basics of connecting to your um, scope via LAN. And I think it's pretty much the same for USB. So hope that hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.